Apple challenge off a crown. <laughs> yeah, tie this for tuppence. Really, I haven't it. Uh, stop. Here's three halfpence if that's any use to you. Oh, thank you, sir. Hey, you, be careful. You better give them flowers for it, because there's blow going to be heavy on your pillow. He's taking down every blessing word you'll say. Oh, I ain't done nothing wrong by speaking to the gentleman. I've arrived to South Wales if I keep off a care. All the respectable girls, so help me. I never spoke to except to ask him to buy a flower or for me. Yeah, what's the row? What's all the blooming noise? There's a tent taking it down. Adam, sir, don't let him lie at charge again. You don't know what it means to me. They'll take away the character. They'll drive me on the streets for speaking to the gentleman. No! 
hús, sem a pulta vaginha de balas. Ah, 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 Seem like give her everything. What give her the greatest gift that any human being can give to another? Life! I introduced her to this seer planet I did. With all its wonders and marvels, the sun that shines and the moon that glows, I pop to stroll through her fine spring nights, and the whole blooming city of London to roam around in selling a blooming flowers. Now, I give her all that, and then I disappear. Leaving her by yourself to enjoy it. Now, that ain't worth half a crown now, ain't I'll take off my belt and I'll give her one poor. Ah, you've got a good heart, Alfie. <laughs> but if you want that half crown from Eliza, you better have a good story to go with it. <laughs> hey, Eliza, what a surprise. Not a grass farthing. Now, you people, do you realize now you wouldn't have the art to send me on to your stepmother without a bit of uh, liquid protection now, would you? Stepmother? <laughs> Stepmother, indeed. Well, I'm willing to marry her. It's me that suffers by it. I'm an absolute slave to that woman, Eliza, just because there ain't no more to love than Come on, Eliza. I'll flip your old dad half a turn at the moment. Oh, well. I'd have been left myself at night. Oh, yeah. Ah, George! Three glorious beers! Oh, George, don't you keep coming around counting on off crowns from me. Good night, Eliza. You're the known cool daughter. She boys, hey, I told you not to go home. It's just fate. Oh, and a little bit of that. The Lord of Duck, big man of all the wild, showing the dude his job and never sure.
shading in too. We turn off the lights. Oh, nonsense. You hear no. much better in the dark. Oh. Yes, but it's a fearful strain sure. listening to all those vowel it's sounds. I'm quite enough up for the soft tune. Mr. Higgins, are you there? What is it, Mrs. Yeah. Baird? A young woman wants to see you, oh. sir. A young woman? What does she want? Does she have an interesting accent? Oh, something dreadful, sir. Let's have her up. Show her up, Mrs. Baird. Very well, sir. That's for you to say. This is rather a bit of luck. I'll show you how I make records. We'll set her talking, then I'll take her down to Bell's business speech, then the broad room it. Never get her on the photograph so that you can turn her off as often as you like to the written transcript before. But this is the young woman, sir. That's good. Oh, no! <laughs> this is a girl I jotted down last night. She's no use. I've got all the records I wanted for this in Roblego, and I'm not going to waste another cylinder on it. Be off with you, I don't want you. Now, don't you be so saucy. You ain't over what I come for yet. You do care that I come in a taxi? No, oh, you're not, Mr. Hill. What do you think a gentleman like Mr. Higgins cares that you keep him? Oh, we are proud. <laughs> well, the yeah, I'm about to give him lessons, not him. I heard him say so. Well, I didn't come here to ask for any compliment. If my money's not good enough, I can go elsewhere. Good enough for what? Good enough for you. <laughs> now you know, don't you? I've come to have lessons I have to pay for them to make no mistake. Well, what do you expect me to say? Well, you might ask me to sit down, I think. Don't I tell you I'm bringing you business? Pickering, shall we ask this baggage to sit down or shall we throw her out of the window? Oh, I won't be called a baggage when I've offered to pay like any lady. But what is it you want? Want to be a lady in a flower shop instead of selling flowers at the corner of Portland Court Road. But they won't take me unless I can talk more genteel. Well, he said he could teach me. Now here I am, ready to pay, not asking any favour, and he treats me as if I was dirt. I know what lessons cost, but I'm ready to pay. Oh, now you're talking. <laughs> I thought you'd come off it when you saw a chance of getting back a bit of what you talked to me last night. You'd had a drop in, hadn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Sit down. Uh, well, if you're going to make a compliment of it. <laughs> Sit. What is your name? Eliza Doolittle. Won't you sit down, Miss Doolittle? Oh, I don't mind if I do. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. 
I'm no good girl, I am, and I'm no one that likes me, you are, I do. You want none of your slump jewelry here, young woman. You've got to learn to behave like a duchess. Take away, Miss Pierce. If she gives you any trouble, well, of that. Ah, I'll call the police, I will. But I've no place to put that. Put her in the dustbin. Ah! Oh, oh Higgins, be reasonable. You must be reasonable, Mr. Higgins. You really, really, you must. You can't walk over everybody like this. I walk over everybody. My dear Mrs. Taylor, my dear Pippin, I never had the slightest intention of walking over anybody. All I propose is that we should be kind to this poor cat. If I did not express myself clearly, it was because I did not wish to hurt her delicate sake. Oh, no, but sir, you can't take a girl up like that, as if you were picking up a pebble on the beach. Why not? Why not? Well, you don't know anything about her. What about her parents? She may be married. <laughs> girl. There's no properly says gone. And marry me. <laughs> I told you, Angel, the streets will be strewn with the bodies of men shooting themselves for your sake before I've done them. Yeah, man, go in a while. He's off his jumpy. I don't even know if gone may station me. Oh, indeed. I'm mad, am I? Very well. Missy Pierce, you've eaten all of the new clothes for her. Throw her off. Oh, stop, Miss Higgins. I won't allow it. Go home to your parents, girl. I ain't got no parents. There you are. She ain't got no parents. <laughs> What's all the fuss about? The girl doesn't belong to anybody. And she's no use to anybody but the intender upstairs. Miss Pierce. Why don't you be her? She'll be paid anything. Oh, do be sensible, sir. What on earth will she want with money? She'll have her food and her clothes. She'll only drink if you give her money. No, you are a brute. It's a lie. No one ever saw the sign of liquor on me. No, oh, sir, you're a gentleman. Don't ever talk to me like that. Does it occur to you, Higgins, the girl has some feelings? Oh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> no, not many feelings we need bother. I'm unhappy with either. Mr. Higgins, I must know on what terms the girl is to be here. What's to become of her when you've finished your teaching? You must look ahead of them, sir. Well, what's to become of her if I leave her in the gutter? Ask me that, Mr. Well, that's her own business, not yours, Mr. Higgins. Well, then, when I've done with her, we can throw her back into the gutter, and then it will be her own business again, so that's all right, yeah? No, you've no feeling on you. You don't care for nothing but yourself. You're all bad enough at this, I'm going. Liza, have some chocolates. <laughs> How do I know what might be in them? I've heard a girl's being drugged by the like of you. Learn some good faith, Liza. I eat one half and you eat the other. You shut up boxes of the barrels of them every day you just live on the main. Oh, and well, the bite of them don't feel like you like to take it out of my mouth. Think of it, Liza. Think of chocolates and taxis and gold and diamonds. No, I don't want no gold and no diamonds. I'm a good girl, I am. Excuse me, Higgins, but I really must interfere. Mrs. Pierce is quite right. If this girl is to put herself in your hands for six months for an experiment of teaching, she must understand thoroughly what she's doing. Eliza, you are to stay here for the next six months, learning how to speak beautifully like a lady in a florist shop. If you're bored and do whatever you're told, you shall sleep in a proper bedroom and have lots to eat and money to buy chocolates and take rides in taxis. If you are naughty and idle, you will sleep in the back kitchen among the black people and be walloped by Mrs. Pierce with a broomstick. <laughs> At the end of six months, you shall go to Buckingham Palace in a carriage beautifully dressed. If the king finds out you're not a lady, you will be taken by the police to the Tower of London, where your head will be cut off. <laughs> As a warning to other presumptuous flowers. If you are not found out, you shall have a present of, um, seven and six. Start my queen as a lady in a shop. If you refuse this offer, you will be the most ungrateful, wicked girl, and the <laughs> angels will weep for you. <laughs> now are you satisfied, Pickery? <laughs> well, I'm going to go play your fairy, Mrs. Pear. Come with me, Eliza. Thank you, Mrs. Pear. Bundle her off to follow. Oh, you're a great bully, you are. I won't stay here for just like, and I won't let nobody want me. Don't answer that, girl. Queen. 
this business, I shall feel responsible for the girl. I hope it is to be clearly understood that no advantage is to be taken of her position. What? That <coughs> That's simply, I assure you. Now, come against you know what I mean. This is no trifling matter. Are you a man of good character where women are concerned? Have you ever met a man of good character where women are concerned? <laughs>
Take no, sir, the mail. Well, pay the bill to say no to the invitation. Is that all? No, sir, there's another letter from that American millionaire, <coughs> Ezra D. Warren's bag. He still wants to lecture for his moral reform league. Throw it away! Oh, the third letter he's written you, sir, you should at least answer it. Oh, all right. Leave it on the desk. I'll get to it. Uh, if you please, sir, the mail's a dustman now, sir. Alfred do little who wants to see you. He says you'll have his daughter. I say, send him a blackguard up. Oh, he may not be a blackguard, Higgins. Nonsense, of course he's a blackguard. Well, whether he is or not, I'm afraid we shall have some trouble with him. No, no, I think not. If there's any trouble, he shall have it with me, not right with him. Do little, sir. Uh, Professor Higgins? Yeah. Well, good morning, Governor. I come about a very serious matter. Born in Hounslow, Mother Welch. What do you want, Doolittle? I want my daughter. That's what I want, see? Of course you do. You're her father, aren't you? I'm glad to see you have some spark of family killing left. She's downstairs there. Take her away at once. What? Take her away. Don't you know I'm going to keep your daughter for you? No, now, look here, Governor. Is this reasonable? To defer it, to take advantage of a man like this? The girl belongs to me. You've got her. <laughs> Where do I come from? How dare you come here and get you black? You set her here under. No, no, don't, don't take the men up like that. Governor. The police shall take you off. This is a part of the which sorts of money by threats. I shall telephone the police. Well, I asked you for a glass farthing. I link to this gentleman here. And I said the word of that money. What else did you come for? Well, what would a bloke come for? <laughs> Be human, Governor. So I'll be done that I never did. Then how did you know she was here? Well, I'll tell you if you'll only let me get a word in. I'm willing to tell you. I wanted to tell you, and I'm waiting to tell you. <laughs> Gregory, this chap has a certain natural gift of rhetoric. Observe the rhythm of his native wood notes while. I'm willing to tell you, I'm wanting to tell you, I'm waiting to tell you. That's the well screen. How did you know Eliza was here? You didn't send none. Well, she, <clears throat> she sent back for a luggage ticket, and I just had to hear about it. She said she didn't want no clothes. Yeah, what was I to think about that? I asked you as a parent, what would I to think? So oh, you come to rescue her from worse than death, eh? No, so come, that's right. Miss Beard, Eliza's father has come to take her away. Give her to him. Woo there, woo there. Why not? <laughs> Never the world ain't me. And not the world, Army. Oh, you better go, Mrs. Beard. I think so indeed, sir. You got that for what taking a sort of a fancy to you. And if you want the girl, I'm not so set on taking her back home again. Now, but what I might be open to is a sort of an arrangement. You know, all I'm asking is my rights as a father. And you're the last man in the world to expect me to let the go for nothing. Because I can see. Well, it was straight going up. Well, what's a five pound note to you and what the lies to me? I think you should know, Doolittle, that Mr. Higgins' intentions are entirely honourable. Oh, of course, say our governor, if I thought they wasn't, I'd ask 50. <laughs> <laughs> you mean to say that you would sell your daughter for 50 pounds? Have you the morals, man? No! <laughs> I can't afford them. And not that you you scored me, not that I mean any harm, mind you, but if we lie not gonna get a bit out of this, why not be too eight? Look at it my way now. What am I? I ask you, what am I? I'm one of the undeserving poor, that's what I am. <laughs> I think what that means to a man. If ever there's anything going and I put in for a bit of it, it's always the same old story. You're undeserving! You can't have it! But my needs, my needs is as great as the most deserving widow who <laughs> ever got money from six different charities in one week for the death of the same husband! <laughs> I don't need less than a deserving man I need more. I don't need less hearty than he do when I drink. Ooh, a lot more. <laughs> I'm straight with you, Governor. I ain't pretending to be deserving. 
I'm undeserving and I intend to go on being undeserving <laughs> because I like it. <laughs> and that's the truth. <laughs> Would you take advantage of a man's nature by doing him out of the price of his own daughter? What did he brought up, fed and clothed, and by the very sweat of his brow? Until such time as she grows big enough to be interesting to come to gentlemen. I ask you, is five pounds unreasonable? I put it to you, and I leave it with you. <laughs> <laughs> no, Pickering, if we were to take this man in hand for six months, he will choose between a seat in the cabinet and a popular pulpit in Wales. <laughs> I suppose we ought to get him a fiver. You'll make bad use of it, I'm afraid. Not me, Governor, so help me, I won't. Just one good spree for me and the missus, giving pleasure to ourselves, employment to others, and satisfaction to the To know that it ain't been thrown away. Why? Couldn't spend it better. <laughs> It would make the man prudent like a man. Goodbye to apples. You just give me what I asked for. Look, the penniless. I'm not a penny more. I rather draw the line at encouraging this sort of immorality too little. Why don't you marry that missus of yours? After all, marriage is not so frightening. You married Eliza's mother. Who told you that, Governor? <laughs> Nobody told me, but I concluded that. Figuring <laughs> if we listen to this man another minute, we shall have no convictions left. My pounds, I think you said. Thank you, Get What? How about silence ready for hours one more time? Eliza! It's Eliza! I never thought she'd clean up so good looking. <laughs> she does me credit, don't she, Governor? Eh, yeah, what are you doing here? And you want your time. And don't you give these here gentlemen none of your lip. If you have any trouble with a governor, give her a few licks with the old strap. That's the way to mend the mind, Paula. Good morning, gentlemen. <coughs> Cheerio, Eliza! By <laughs> George, there's a man for you. Philosophical genius of the first water. Mrs. <laughs> Pierce. Write to Mr. Ezra Wallingford. And tell him that if he wants a lecturer, to get in touch with Mr. Elfred P. Doolittle. <laughs> <laughs> just on the one of the most original moralists in England. Yes. <laughs> yeah, what he come for? Here you are. I know my bowels, I knew before I came. If you know them, say them. I, A, I, O, yes. Stop. Say A, E, A, O, U. Difficult this do little, but do try to. Oh, Mr. Bailey Pickering, as a military man, you ought to know that drilling is what she needs much better. You leave before she'll be turning to your more sympathy. All right, if you insist, but have a little patience with her, Higgins. Of course. Say, dear. You ain't got no art, you ain't. Say, dear. I. Quick. 
Can't you hear the difference? Put your tongue forward. And then till it squeezes against the top of your lower teeth. Now say cock. Now say oh. Oh. Now say cup, 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 oh, 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 oh. Cut, 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 oh, oh, oh. I sold that lot of glorious tea. You finished the strawberry tart, I couldn't eat another thing. Oh, thanks, chap, really. Well, it's a shame to waste it. No, it won't go to waste. I know someone who's immensely fond of strawberry tart. Here, darling, wait for me. Rain in Spain, Spain. 
comes with my friends and not run the risk of seeing my son Henry. Whenever my friends meet him, I never see them again. Well, he had to come, you see. He's taking the girl to the annual embassy ball and he wanted to try her out first. Beg your pardon. You know, the, the annual embassy ball. Yes, yes, I know about the ball. That. No, you did not. Well, it's quite uh, simple, really. You see, uh, one night I went to the opera in Covent Garden to hear one of my favourite operas, Aida. And as I was coming out, oh, no, incidentally, they didn't do Aida that evening. They did Gutter Deborah instead. <laughs> I'd never heard Gutter Deborah before. By George, that's a rackety one. Boy, you're so boy, you. <laughs>
seem tickering. Oh, my, you do look nice. I saw Colonel Pickering and Henry, dear. I am most provoked. I've heard you're bringing a cauliflower girl from Common Garden to my box. Oh, well, darling, she'll be all right. I told her to speak properly. And she has strict orders as to her behavior. You can keep to two subjects, the weather and everybody's hair. So a fine day, and how do you do? And not let her go on herself in general. Help her along in public. You would be quite safe. Oh, safe? To talk about our health in the middle of a break? Well, yes, she's going to talk about something. Oh, Henry, dear, you're not even dressed. Master! I changed my shirt. <laughs> Where is the girl now? Being thin. Some of the new clothes we bought for her didn't quite fit. I told Pickering we should have taken her with us. <laughs> <laughs> You're a pretty pair of babies playing with your live doll. Ah, it's ice still. Damn, are all these people with you, Mother? Ah, oh, Mrs. Pickering, is this your celebrated son? And I'm sorry to say my celebrated son has no manners. He may be the life and soul of the Royal Society's foray, but it's rather trying on the commonplace occasion. Ah! Thank you. Mrs. Higgins, may I introduce Miss Eliza Doolittle? My dear Miss Doolittle, how kind of you to let me come. Delighted, my dear. <laughs> Mrs. Einstein Hill, Miss Doolittle. Oh, Lord and Lady Washington, Miss Doolittle, and Bridget Einstein Hill. How do you do? How do you do? Miss Doolittle. Good afternoon, Professor Higgins. Ha, ha, ha. 
no time for flippancy. The way you've given her these past six weeks has exceeded all bounds of oh, for God's sake. Stop pacing up and down. Can't you settle someplace? That's a poor little wife on your nerves. I'm not nervous. Where is it? On the desk. The car is here, sir. Thank you, Mrs. Pierre. Now you're helping me, Eliza? Oh, yes, sir. Help her indeed. I bet the damn gowns are the best. I warned you about those French designers. You should have gone to a good English store when you knew everybody was on our side. <laughs> oh. Have a little port. No, oh, thank you. It will quieten your nerves. No, thank you. Are you so sure she'll retain everything you've hammered into her? We shall see. But suppose she doesn't? Then I lose my bet. You know what I can't stand about you, Higgins? It's your confounded complacency. <laughs> In a moment like this, there's so much at stake, it's utterly indecent that you don't need a little port. <laughs> What of the girl? You act as if she doesn't matter at all. Rubbish, Pickering. Of course she matters. What do you think I've been doing all these months? What could possibly matter more than to take a human being and change her into a different human being by creating a new speech for her? I'm spilling up the deepest gold that separates class from class and soul from soul. How she matters and then say. Colonel Pickley, 
Who is that captivating creature with Professor Higgins? I don't know what did you say. Well, I was stopped for a moment, and then I collected myself, and I said, Eliza Doolittle. Oh, that was very quick thinking, sir. <laughs> Higgins, do you think Eliza will make it? Oh, I hope so. I've grown terribly fond of that girl. Professor Henry Higgins. <laughs> ah, my frog.
I think I shall tell them too. It's been a grand occasion. Good night, Pickett. Good night, Pickering. Hungarian. Oh, uh, Mrs. Pierce. Captain, I meant to tell her I wanted coffee in the morning instead of tea. Leave a little note for her, will you? What the devil have I done with my slippers? Tear your slippers and bear! Take your slippers and may you never have a day's luck with them! What on earth? What's the matter? Is anything wrong? Nothing wrong <laughs> with you. I've won your bet for you, haven't I? That's enough for you. I don't matter, I suppose. You won my bet, you presumptuous insect. I won it. What did you throw those slippers at me for? Because I wanted to smash your face. I'd like to kill you, you selfish brute. Why did you leave me where you picked me out of in the gutter? Well, you thank God that it's all over and you may throw me back again there now, do you? The creature is not the soft of all. Oh, no. throw him, you cat. Okay, <laughs> hey, show your temper to me. Sit down and be quiet. What's to become of me? What's to become of me? How the devil do I know what's to become of you? What does it matter what becomes of you? You don't care. I know you don't care. You wouldn't care if I was dead. I am nothing to you, not so much as them slippers. No slippers. No slippers. <laughs> I didn't think it made any difference now. Why have you suddenly begun going on like this? May I ask whether you complain of your treatment here? No. Has anybody behaved badly to you, Colonel Pickering, Miss Pierce? No. You don't pretend that I have treated you badly? No. Well, glad you hear it. Um, perhaps you're tired after the strain of the day. Have a chocolate. No. Thank you. Anyway, I suppose it was natural for you to be anxious. But it's all over now. There's nothing more to worry about. No, nothing more for you to worry about. Oh, God, I wish I was dead. Why? In heaven's name, why? Listen to me, Delilah. All oh, this irritation is purely subjective. I don't understand. I'm too ignorant. It's only imagination. Nobody's hurting you. Nothing's wrong. And you go to bed like a good girl and sleep it off. Have a little cry and say your prayers. That will make you comfortable. I heard your prayers. Thank God it's all over. Well, don't you thank God it's all over? Now you're free and can do what you like. What am I fit for? What have you left me fit for? Where am I to go? What am I to do? What's to become of me? Oh, that's what's worrying you, is it? Oh, I shouldn't bother about that if I were you. I should imagine you won't have much difficulty in settling yourself somewhere or other. Though I haven't, haven't quite realized you're going to work. Uh, uh, you, you might marry, you know. Yes, Eliza, you see, all men are not confirmed old bachelors like me and the Colonel. Most men are the marrying sort, poor devils. Then, uh, you're not bad looking. It's quite a pleasure to look at you at times. Well, not now, of course. You've been crying, and, uh, do you look like the very devil? <laughs> but, uh, when you're all right and quite yourself, you're not what you call attractive. Come, you go to bed and have a good night's rest, and then get up and look at yourself in the glass, and you won't feel so cheap. I dare say my mother could find some chap or other who'll do very well. We rubbed off that in Covent Garden. What do you mean? I sold the flowers. I didn't sell myself. Now that you've made a lady of me, I'm not fit to sell anything else. Oh, fortune, I don't want to talk human relations by dragging all that pants and not buying and selling and you need to marry the fellow if you don't want to. What else am I to do? You're not a pit. What about that, I, or that old idea of a florist shop? Pickering would set you up in one. He's got lots of money. Well, you'll have to pay for all those togs you've been wearing. And that for the hire of the jewelry will make a big hole in 200 pounds. Oh, come. You'll be all right. I, I must clear off a bit. I am devilish sleepy. By the way, I was looking for something. What was it? Your slippers. Oh, yes. Of course. You were... Uh, you shied them at me. Before you go, sir, do my clothes belong to me or to Colonel Pickering? What the devil yours would they be to Pickering? <laughs> Why did you start bothering about that in the middle of the night? 
I want to know what I may take away with me. I don't want to be accused of stealing. Stealing? Oh, you shouldn't have said that, Eliza. That shows a want of feeling. No, oh, I'm sorry. I'm only a common, ignorant girl, and in my station, I have to be careful. There can't be any feeling between the like of you and the like of me. Please, will you tell me what belongs to me and what doesn't? You may take the whole damn house full of your life, except the jewels they're hired. Will that satisfy you? Stop, please. Will you take these to your room and keep them safe? I don't want to run the risk of their being missing. Oh, hand them over. If these belong to me instead of the jewel, I'd ram them down your ungrateful throat. If this ring isn't the jeweler's, it's the one you bought me at Brighton. I don't want it now. <coughs> don't you hit me. Hit you? Infamous creature! How dare you accuse me of such a thing? It is you who hit me. You have wounded me to the heart. I'm glad. I got a little of my own back anyhow. You have caused me to lose my temper, a thing that has hardly ever happened to me before. I prefer to say nothing more tonight. I am going to bed. You better leave your own note for Mrs. Pierce about the coffee, for it won't be done by me. Damn Mrs. Pierce and damn the coffee and damn you and damn my own folly. For having lavished my heart on knowledge of the treasure of my regard and intimacy on a, a, a heartless gutter snipe. Of all the substitute. Show me! 
slippers at me. I never came with the slightest provocation. The slippers came bang at my head before I uttered a word. And she used the most perfectly awful language I was shocked. Well, I'm dashed. I don't understand it. You were shown every possible consideration. She admitted it herself. Well, I'm dashed. Oh, my God, say, Pickering, stop being dashed and do something. <laughs> what? Call the police. What are they there for in heaven's name? Yes, oh. He thinks you can't feel a light. His name is the police. as if she were a thief. Or a lost umbrella. Why not? I want to find her. The girl belongs to me. I pay five pounds for her. <laughs> oh, I uh, Oh, I'm stop the yard, please. Uh, Mrs. Pierce, may I have some coffee? Yes, sir. Oh, hello, old chap. Colonel Hugh Pickering here, 27 A. Wimpole Street. I should like to report a missing person. Anything you can do to assist in her recovery will be frightfully appreciated. I am not without influence, and I will see to it that your superior... Hmm? Oh. Uh, Eliza Doolittle. Uh, about uh, 21. I should say about 5 foot 7. Her eyes? Oh, <laughs> 
You'll never, 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 never guess who this is. Yes, it is. <laughs> By George, what a memory. How are you, old chap? It's so good to hear your voice again. Thirty years, is it really? Oh, yes, well, that's a lot of water under the, uh, uh, thing. Uh, who's the old fellow? I, I, I'll tell you why I called. Uh, something rather unpleasant has happened at this end. Could I come right over and see you? Oh, good. I'll be right over. Thank you, Boozy. Oh, Mrs. Pierce, I'm going over to the home office. Oh, I do hope you find the Colonel Pickering. Mr. Higgins will miss her. Mr. Higgins will miss her? Blast, Mr. Higgins. I'll miss her. Pickering! Pickering! Uh, where's the Colonel? Oh, he's gone over to the home office, sir. You see that, Mrs. Pierce? I'm disturbed that he runs to hell. Now, there's a good fellow. Mrs. Pierce, you're a woman. Why can't a woman be more like a man? I mean, they're so decent, such regular chaps. Ready to help you through any mishaps. Ready to fuck you up whenever you want up. Why can't a woman be a chop? Like a box was overflowing And carry on as if my home were in a tree Would I run off and never tell me where I'm going? Well, I got a woman Be like me Things one can pick up. 
The difference between a lady and a flower girl isn't how she behaves, but how she is treated. I shall always be a flower girl, Professor Higgins, because you always treat me as a flower girl and always will. And I know that I shall always be a lady to Colonel Pickering, because you always treat me as a lady and always will. Oh, Henry, please don't grind your teeth! <laughs> No. I'll see him in the library. Eliza, if my son begins to break things, I give you full permission to have him evicted. Oh, and Henry, dear, if I were you, I'd stick to two subjects, the weather and your health. <laughs> <laughs> Stop feeling neglected, and the men you know will spend half their time snivelling over you and the other half giving you black. 
black eyes. <laughs> you buy me clothes. I'm feeling selfish, don't you? Very well, then. Be off with you to the sort of people you like. Marry some sentimental hog or other with lots of money, and a thick pair of lips to kiss you with, and a thick pair of boots to kick <coughs> you with. If you can't appreciate what you've got, you'd better get with the cat, appreciate. Oh, I can't talk to you. You turn everything against me. I'm always in the wrong. But don't you be too sure you have me underfoot to be trampled on and talked down. I'll marry Freddy, I will, as soon as I'm able to support him. <laughs> Freddy! That poor devil who couldn't get a job as an errand boy, even if he had the guts to try for it? Woman, do you not understand? I have made you a consort for a king. Freddy loves me. That makes him king enough for me. I don't want him to work. He wasn't brought up with as I was. I'll go and be a teacher. What will you teach you tell me? What you taught me, I'll teach phonetics. Ah. <laughs> I'll offer myself as an assistant to that brilliant Hungarian. What? That humbug, that imposter, that toadying ignoramus, teach him my method, my discovery. You get one step in that direction and I'll wring your neck, do you hear? Bring away, what do I care? I knew you'd strike me one day. <laughs> That's done you in, Riggins, it is. Now I don't care that for your bullying and your big talk. What a fool I was. What a dominated fool. To think you were the earth and sky. What a fool I was. What a non-treated fool. There is an idea in your head or a word in your mouth that I haven't put there. There'll be spring every year without you. England still will be here without you. There'll be fruit on the tree and the shore by the sea. There'll be crumpets and tea without you. Art and music will thrive without you. Somehow kids will survive without you. And there still will be rain on that plain down in Spain. Even that will remain without you. I can do without you. You, dear friend, you talk so well. You
She's gone. You still, of course. What did you expect? What am I to do? Do without, I suppose. <laughs> so I shall. If the Higgins oxygen burns up her little lungs, let us seek some stubbing as it shoots her. She's an owl, sickened by a few days of my sunshine. Very well. Let her go. I can do without her. I can do without anybody. I have my own soul. I own spark of divine fire. Bravo, Eliza. <laughs> Like a habit one could always 
great. Thank you. 